go. Hey there, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Smashing Crossbar Podcast. I'm your host, Josh, once again joined by Benno. How are you, mate? I'm not too bad, mate. Public holiday down here tomorrow, so day off. <laughs> Bloody oath, mate. How good is it? Hope everyone else in Newcastle enjoys their day at work. Um, it's about time we got a holiday. We've done nothing in six months, so let's have a holiday. <laughs> and then another one in two weeks. And another one in two weeks for the horses. Absolutely. Need a day off to watch the horses go around. Why not? And I've got an uh, audio that Monday, so... Oh, half your luck, mate. Half your luck. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to everyone in the chat. Say good day. If you've got any questions for the girls, that'd be great. Um, other than that, we'll introduce them now. Obviously, the uh, W League Player of the Year, Claire Quayle. How are we? Hello. Good. How are you? Very good. Very good. Don't mind. If, just let us know if the audio drops in and out chat. Um, the Newcastle internet, we understand that it's a little bit slower than what, what it is down here. So we'll see how we go. Um, and obviously, the uh, most improved, obviously, uh, W League Player of the Year as well. We are joined by Tessa Tamplin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very good. I wish I was as bubbly as you you are right now. <laughs> yeah. It, it must be because we're old, Ben. Yes, <laughs> just... we've established this. We were just discussing, buddy, um, how, how old we are. We're not going there, but we're, we're old compared to these ladies right here. <laughs> so, obviously, girls, we're going to talk a little bit about the end of the career, um, what we can hopefully expect from you guys in the season coming up. Um, now that we've finally got a date, December 27, um, I believe you girls will be starting training, according to Ash, the new W League appointed coach, um, as of mid next month. So, um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that, a little bit, as you said, about your career, where you grew up, where it all began, and obviously a little bit about the women's game in general. So, guys in the chat, if you've got any questions, feel free, whack them through to us. What have we got here? Mary's put in here. Hi, Claire and Tess and lads. How are you, Mary? <laughs> um, League Sports Gaming, what's AFL? Exactly. The only time of the year um, where we actually care about it because we get a public holiday for it. <laughs> uh, your audio wasn't too good, Claire. There you go. We'll, we'll get there. Um, Can we get an exclamation mark in the chat for Ben's dinner where we guess what Ben <laughs> is having or had for dinner? Absolutely. Um, Lockie Ma, welcome, buddy. Big shout out to Gabrielle Ma, optometrist at Jasmine, our major sponsors. For all your eye care needs, be sure to go down and see those guys at Jasmine. Mention the Crossbar Capers podcast and they'll look after you, no doubt about it. So we may as well start with the player of the year, W League player of the year. Um, I guess it all started way back in Nam. <laughs> 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 but um, Port Macquarie was where you were born. Uh, beautiful part of obviously the northern, northern New South Wales. So, what was it like growing up on the beaches? Was there much much soccer at that age? Was it any thought at a younger age? Um, it was pretty much town. It's a good tourist town to go back to now. But uh, I started out actually in gymnastics and tennis, and my parents. Um, us all into a caravan when I was about seven years old and we um, travelled around Australia so any sport that we were playing at that time sort of stopped and then when we got back to Port Macquarie um, my older brother started playing soccer and arch and cricket and so whatever he did I did and then my younger brother did as well so um, yeah it was just a pretty competitive family being in the middle of two brothers so there was never the main sport being soccer it was just try and be the best at whatever sport was on that weekend or that weeknight yeah absolutely um again as I said it's a beautiful beautiful place to grow up and obviously at that age getting a chance to travel around Australia why not um I wish I'd love to yeah, 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 exactly right. I wouldn't mind traveling. I'd, I'd, l- I'd love to be able to go more than 25 kilometers from my home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know the beach is 28 kilometers out of, two kilometers out of the zone, so I can't even go for a surf. That's how bad it is. Um, but yeah, obviously, 
we, we, we change, we go from Port Macquarie growing up, obviously around the beaches and everything else to Tess, obviously growing around the beaches and everything, all the so forth, local girl here in Newcastle. Um, let's be honest, you've, you've pretty much been with the Jets Academy and then obviously now the Newcastle Jets since you were a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's pretty much all you've known. So soccer or football, I should say, sorry, at the um, early age was definitely a thing. Who got you into football? Who was the main influence? Um, well, my I have three brothers and two of them are older and they played. And so pretty much from the moment I could walk, I had two older brothers pushing me around and like, I was just the toy in a way. <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, so I got into it super young and initially played with um, Redhead Dudley, just with the boys team and had the most amazing coach who was like, the biggest fan. He was like, I'm a girl in my team. <laughs> <laughs> let, let's not be shy here. Let's not be shy. It was probably Taylor Reed. <laughs> no, his name was Jimmy Kresner. Um, Jimmy Kresner. And, yeah. yeah. And I played with those boys for a, a, a kind of a while until playing with boys was kind of not a thing anymore. And I had to get into like a full girls team. And then I went to Macquarie and I was only there for like two years and then got scouted in Jets and have been there ever since. Since I was like, Oh my gosh, 10, maybe between 10 and 12, I've been there. The age of 10 and 12, so <laughs> a while. Yeah. yeah, well, it's safe to say, obviously, um, doing a bit of, obviously, research and having a look through some stuff. Obviously, your brothers were a bit of a fan, obviously, when you definitely started out. They were pretty, pretty keen to see, obviously, get into the Jets Academy and obviously make your debut and yeah. everything else. So, obviously, it's safe to say that you know, they, they, they definitely... Definitely support you and obviously um, are very, very happy with the career so far and hopefully Matildas and so forth to come. Yeah, 100%. Def. My oldest brother, Liam, he's my biggest fan. <laughs> I don't ever catch a break with him. He's like, what's the next step test? Where are you going now? <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere. She's <laughs> staying at the Jets. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you mean? Where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to build the club around Tess. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's been so there longer than most of the senior team <laughs> you just picture the brothers just coming out with all the with the notepad long it, you, you mate you missed three tackles should have yes. got that one four goals miss that one yeah that's it <laughs> what, what what were their thoughts of the screamer you scored obviously for goal of the year oh i got so much crap about not celebrating they were like Tess you didn't even celebrate and i was like oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Did, um, she didn't even know she scored till she turned back around. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say, everyone in Australia knew before she did. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were the biggest sharers of the post. They thought it was an absolute crack up. So. <laughs> um, ben, I think we've got a question there from Mary for the girls. Uh, which one? The get out of the goalpost, Claire? Your connection is poor. <laughs> yep. Yep. What happens when you are stuck in a house alone and no internet? <laughs> I'm on my hot, hot spot now. Oh, oh, wow. wow. All right, question for the girls. Uh, what are you expecting for a better season with Ash at the reins and who do you think will be the assistant coach? Go with you first, Claire. Um, I'm not sure that we can comment or announce about assistant coach yet. Um, okay. So there's, there's, there's think, someone, someone in the, someone in the pipe, someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll leave that up to the club to Very good. announce. Oh, yeah, but, um, I think like Ash is a great organizer, and I think that comes from her being a teacher as well. She's a good communicator, and you very much know what's happening. And um, you know, if things aren't on the pitch, what she wants, she'll tell you. But also. She allows that sort of creative freedom for the players as well. And that comes from the back all the way to the front, like play what you see or if you want to back yourself on something, she has no problems with you doing that too. So um, I think, yeah, I, I've worked with Ash well, since I was a field player when I was 14 years old. She took me to nationals. So um, I've had a good relationship with her over the years and seen her progress as much as I've progressed through. So, um, yeah, she definitely deserves the position and it'll be a big task, but I'm confident and happy to support her in it as well. 
Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll take on that question a little bit, obviously, for you, Tess. We'll just add to that, obviously. What are your thoughts? What are, what are you expecting out of next season? What do you hope to get out of next season that you maybe didn't um, this season? Um, well, I 100% agree with everything Claire just said. Um, but I'm hoping this season we get a couple more wins in us, um, especially with some of the stronger teams losing a lot of their more – elite players I guess you could say because they're overseas or what have you um, I think it'll give us a really good opportunity to um, like get some real success and really like get some goals get some wins and yeah I think Ash is going to do an amazing job with us we've all known her for years so we have, we'll have like that connection with her like we know everyone's kind of like on the same page or in a way yeah. um, and I think that'll be really good this season yeah absolutely obviously um Hopefully we'll see a few more W League teams come in. I believe Wellington are looking at putting a bid in to Ooh. possibly get a W yeah. League side in, hopefully sooner rather than later. Possibly over yeah, a bit. I, yeah. I yeah. read something that they'd be in for next season, possibly. Yeah, yeah. So obviously they'd like to obviously do it in New Zealand, but I don't think that'll probably happen. I'd say they'll probably merge sort of thing down in Canberra or Wollongong or something. Um, possibly from, from what we've heard, obviously. But yeah. again, again, every I think every team... Um, a league club should have a W league club like the Central Coast. They had one, then apparently there's no but, funds. But but so at the same point as well, they had one and it did really well on the one season that it was there. Correct. And then as much as we don't like the coast, <laughs> you want a derby. You want a derby. Oh and yeah. Everything you do. That's. I mean, technically sense. you've got North Shore, but that doesn't really count. Mm. Yeah. True. True. Uh, what do we got in here? I think. I just think going back on that where. It, Tess yeah, just mentioned that a lot of clubs are losing their elite players. I think that that's going to hit Melbourne City really, really hard because they won't have them to rely yeah. on. So it's going to be a very interesting W League season. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think there'll be a quite a bit more of an even playing field, but also the opportunity for clubs to like really go hard or harder. Yeah, go hard, go hard and blood their youth. <laughs> Absolutely. It's what they should be doing. It's what it's definitely I think what we need to be doing, obviously, um, with the women's world cup coming up in a couple of years. I think yep. we need to develop and invest a lot more in the youth systems, um, obviously the Jets and every other club obviously, to um get the girls out there and yeah, show obviously what Australia can do with you know, the coaches, obviously bl blooding the youth system. Um, well but definitely for the women, but obviously for the men as well. The men need to obviously do a little bit more, in my opinion. Um Obviously, Ash was got to ask the question about possibly Jen Hoy possibly coming back. I heard that. Uh, stuff. Yeah, I, I think it was more of a very far fetched question. <laughs> but what, what was obviously both of you girls played with her um, in, in her first in? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I did. You didn't. You didn't. Definitely didn't. Okay. Yep. Yeah, right. A little bit, little bit too young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what What was it like? What What was she like? Obviously, whoever everyone who doesn't know um, Jen Hoy, let's be honest, she's a very good attacker in in the women's game, and um, yeah, good, very good player to watch. What was she like to play with? Oh yeah, she was like full of energy and got the speed and quite bubbly person on and off the field. Um, always gave her her best. So up, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on in the striker department um i, I can't really say uh, whether she is or isn't going to be around um yeah she's living here but I, I haven't i haven't seen her or been in contact at all so i'm, I'm not too sure but if yeah there's going to be that addition to the team i'm sure it'll be welcomed yeah that's pretty much what ash was <laughs> what they said oh you know if she wants to come more than welcome <laughs> that's pretty much what she was yeah. saying I wouldn't say no. Was what, what I tell you what, there are plenty. There are plenty of W League players living up there that don't necessarily have contracts at the moment. Riley Dobson's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah Riley Dobson. We had her on the show um, a while back, and obviously, yeah, you know, the Newcastle girl, obviously, and um, hopefully, yeah, possibly, possibly. I think she was at Merriweather this year. Yeah. So um, yeah. missed against yeah. Adams Town, so that was good. Um, <laughs> very <laughs> pleased about that. Um, obviously. Tess, we, for me, I think the highlight, the highlight for me of what, watching your career so far would be your season, your your obviously your debut game. 
Now, game. your debut game, obviously, it was against Perth. Yeah. There was roughly 58 um, touches. You got about 58 touches roughly in the game in 78 minutes. And you even found time to have a chuck early in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start from the beginning of it. What was it like when you found out you were going to get um, your first call up for the Jets? So you just like, don't mind my language, but I was shitting it. I was so <laughs> nervous. Like, I didn't find out that I was playing until the Friday, the Friday afternoon. I don't think we played till Sunday, if I'm yeah. correct. Um, and so that whole Saturday, I wouldn't leave my room. I was like, no, mum, I need to focus. I was drinking so much water. I was <laughs> like, everything I could to prepare for the goddamn game. And then I think that whole build up and then getting on the field, and I was so excited, but so nervous. And it was the it was the most many like the most amount of people I'd ever played in front of as well. And even though we don't get like a massive crowd at Jets, I I was just like the whole environment and everything, and I was just so, <laughs> so excited and so nervous. And yeah, and I think everything just ended up making me vomit at the end. <laughs> so so I believe if everyone who, who watched it, it was it was like it was early on. It was like yeah. in the fiftieth minute or something like that, and then. Little chunder, and then continued on for a good twenty-five yep. minutes before Deansy obviously took you off. Um, yeah. So I think it was just all my emotions just coming out. Like <laughs> I just had to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember. Brilliant. I remember watching. It. I was like, well, that was different. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something you see every day on someone's debut. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Who knows? It probably. Probably got you the extra 25 minutes, maybe. <laughs> Dina's maybe. Like, ah, she's right for another half hour. Easy. <laughs> Clear her out. She's fine. Um, what about you? What about you, Claire? Obviously, you played, obviously. Um, you didn't play. You didn't my play. Day, yeah. My debut was 2013-14. I was uh, still living in Port, finishing school. And um, at the time, my parents were driving me down because it was a bit of a drive to train and play and stuff. And yeah. um. I was sick on the Friday, so at that stage I was only going down to train on a Friday and then would be there for the game. Um, I was sick on the Friday, quite ill, and told the coach I wouldn't make it to training, but, you know, I was on the bench the next day and I'd come down and do that. There's very little um, chance of getting on, I suppose. And I was at about uh, Bulladila and I got a text. And it said, Eliza's injured her ankle. Mm. Um, you'll be playing. I turned to dad. Mum didn't come with me that day. Dad had chosen. And I was like, dad, I'm playing. And he's like, oh, shit, kind of thing. Like the two of us were like, oh, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was against Brisbane Raw. And um, anyway, so I had about an hour and a bit in the car to get ready and try and stretch the legs out and just. I think in a way it was good that I had little time to think about it. Um, yeah. yeah. I think from then yeah. we, 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 we lost, I think, 4-2 or something like that. Correct, um, correct. Yep. Yeah, I, I still watch uh, some – there's a free kick I watched from that. And I was a cricket player up until I was 18. And, like, I dived for this free kick and dived like I was catching a six-stitcher. And the <laughs> technique back then was full-blown cricket. Um, <laughs> compared to my dives now, so yeah, it was. Uh, it all came pretty quickly. My debut, and then uh, had to wait for the following season for a bit of game time, and, and yeah. wait quite a few more years. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, oh, geez, going, that just kept going. I would have been in so much trouble if that was me freaking driving my daughter down. You know, oh, you know, daughters, you've just been named in the squad. Yeah, cool, let's go. Leave mum at home, bugger. Yeah, <laughs> it's no, your day, yeah. Have we got time to turn um, around? Nah, bugger. <laughs> yeah, she take it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was actually a, like in, in the following season where mum had come down with me and we were driving down and I warmed up and everything was on the bench and then Hannah Southwell had hurt her back or something in warm up and I'd gone into the change rooms and then literally as they were lining up to go out, they put me in the lineup. So when I walked out to play, mum was there for that one and she was like, oh, a bit more entertaining now. Like, so, yeah. 
Let's just watch it back. Um, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they've had the bad timings because then I waited about three or four seasons playing Kelsey Weiss, did her ACL. Yeah. And um, that was our first home game for that season. And normally mum and dad will just come to one or two home games. I said, oh, come to this one. They said, oh, we're away. They're driving back from Lismore and they put it on the radio. And then they hear the commentator say my name and they're like... Yep, bad timing again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome, Dylan, as well, mate. Um, yeah, obviously you've played. You've def- there's been some decent keepers at the club. Um, I, I believe Breck Eckerstrom yeah, was there great. as well. She was a yeah. American. What was it like? Yeah, American. Yeah, I think it was. Um, what was the other one? Caitlin. Caitlin. Someone. Caitlin um, Rowland. Yeah. Rowland? Yeah. 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 What was it yeah. like? Um, you know, obviously getting a bit of, you know, playing second fiddle, I suppose, a little bit, but obviously learning off these girls. Yeah, they were uh, like three completely different keepers. Um, Kelsey was really strong, shot stopper, like just powerful, also quite a comedian. And it was sad that, you know, I only got three, four weeks with her and she did her ACL. Um, But then Caitlin was, you know, really tall and, like we called her spaghetti legs and she was um like very entertaining as well like you, you never don't get a laugh out of american um and you learn like different traits and things because they came from different different nwsl clubs so yep. each goalkeeper coach over there had their little you know quirks and traits so we goldie and i were able to learn from that as well um mm. then brit came and she's like next level athlete and yeah. she's born track runner and so I, I'm nowhere near a runner so whenever we did running I was well and truly <laughs> embarrassed but um, goalkeeping wise you know like she it, it's hard as a second keeper you yep. you know will finish training and you don't you don't get that reward at the end of the week um, and the amount of you know for six years that's what I did and so I, it got to that point of being like, when is this going to happen or should I keep going? But I think Britt was sort of a breath of fresh air and brought in. Um, she just like really brought that love of goalkeeping back for me. Yeah. And yeah, very much got me going again. And honestly, like I attribute a lot of my performance last season to her and the assistance she gave me in those two seasons behind her because, yeah, the drive and the things like that just came back a little bit from her enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's probably the biggest thing in, obviously, what opens up the test as well, is obviously, um, yeah, the young keeper like yourself is coming in and obviously you've got these experienced keepers. I suppose the biggest thing is you want yeah. someone, you know, you definitely want that someone who's in front of you like, um like Brit, obviously, who still acknowledges the youth and realizes that she was there once upon a time and yeah. you know, is happy to obviously show some of her knowledge and you know take you under a wing a bit and improve your game, which is really good. Did yeah. was there anyone test like that for you who obviously over the years? Um there was. It was it was tricky for me because I came up through the academy and so yeah. a lot of the girls that I play with W League now weren't necessarily ever in my team so I never got to train with them or if I did it was only ever like a training um like I would always, like I'd always be in the other team or like small yeah. things like that um but still I had because being in the academy you do have the connection of the girls older I got to watch all of those girls come up and have idols and so like girls like Hannah Brewer especially when she came back to the academy for that one season was a very big like person I aspired to be because she was like such a good leader um she was very strong in the back she taught me a lot about defending just like body positioning small things like that that a young girl doesn't really always get like the individual training from a coach is more like sometimes yeah you don't get as as often so Hannah really helped me with that as well um and yeah just watching like the Sofina Nanovich when she was in her time and like everyone coming through Claire Wheeler, even though we didn't play the same positioning, but just her like 
aura on the field you just like felt support when she was in there you know and she's just such a hard worker like all of the girls Cass Davis she would always be like I'm always here supporting underneath like yeah all the girls but yes I was really lucky that I had kind of all of them or a lot of them um to help support me and I could kind of pick or not pick but like I kind of got small little snippets of um some really good like qualities in each of the girls and be like that's what I want to do kind of yeah Mm. Obviously, one of the questions I do like to ask most of the girls I get on is obviously, again, you know, being in Nova Castro myself, obviously, you know, looking up to and watching some of the, the girls come through, obviously, um, you can't go past Emily Van Egmont, let's be honest. Um, Newcastle girl, her dad's obviously, you know, jets through and through, won her first premiership. Um, what, what was it like? Obviously, her, her drive, her, her um, ability, obviously, is, you know, Again, what was her training like? What was she like to train with? Um, how was she, what was she like on the field? Obviously, as a mentor or even just, yeah, I suppose someone who knew what she wanted and to get the best out of you guys. Uh, yeah. Go Claire first. <laughs> um, I actually, I had a few stints with Em, like when, yeah. when she was first at Newcastle and then went to Wanderers and then yeah. came back. Um, and then after her Germany stint, came back and... So, uh, the, like, she just is a competitor, and I love it. Like, yeah. whether it's literally, like, the smallest game in warm-up to on the field, like, she just competes no matter what. And, you know, like, and it's – none of it was personal. Like, I, I would get my name razzed so many times. I'd just hear this, like, way low, like, after a pass or things like that. And – and I never took it to heart. It was like, damn, like she's holding me accountable, wanting me to be better, or like that was an okay pass and an okay option, but there's a better one there. Like whether it was just the smallest of games to a real game, you, know, you were always held accountable. And I, and I think in women's sport and the nature of women, sometimes people shy away from that or perceive it as being aggressive or arrogant, but. For me, like, I I guess I'm a little bit similar. Like, I've just got that standard of wanting to compete no matter what. And M is dead set, just a competitor, but also very hardworking and talented, um, that she has the right to just drive sessions and get the best out of people. Um, So, yeah, and I've seen her over the years and things like that. And she's she's great. Like, she means well with everything and... She's achieved where she's at purely based on her hard work and competitive nature. So, yeah, it was quite a privilege to be able to play with her. Yeah. Um, Tess? I completely agree with um, Claire. I – unfortunately, I only got, like, the one season with Emily before she um, left. Um, yeah. I did a lot of work with her dad, Gary, but both of them, as Claire said, are extremely competitive and they 100% keep you accountable, like – you screw up, you're going to get told you screw up and that you can't do that anymore, you know, kind of thing. And it was very intimidating, don't get me wrong, especially being a young player and getting screamed at, like, well, not screamed at, but like, Tessa, like, clean it up, kind of thing. Um, (laughs) But, no, as Claire said, it it made you want to be better. You wanted to, well, for me especially, I wanted to impress Em. Like, I wanted to be the player that if I got put on her team in, like, a small-sided game, that she was happy I was on her team. Like, not like, oh, fuck I got Tessa no I wanted to be the player that she was like yes I got I got Tess you know um so I yeah I loved playing with them she always made me feel like I wanted to be better like I had to be better and yeah 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 yeah. it's just it's an interesting because obviously everyone sort of gets a different feel some people get obviously you know a five minute stint with her um and obviously someone who's been beat who's played with her obviously a fair bit um it said I know father um well obviously when I was playing North North New South Wales State League and stuff like that um, he'd come down and do academies and coach and stuff with us and everything else. And you can tell how um, determined he is to get the best out of the players. And yeah. he, he has that sort of aggressive tone sometimes, but at the same yeah. time, it's it. you know, you know, when he's screaming at you, mm. he wants something better than you. And he's definitely passed that down to his daughter because I've yeah. seen her train yeah. and everything else. And she yells abuse. And all, all, you, all you do is just sit there and just go, whoa. <laughs> like, and, and as, as yeah. Claire said, it, it's I mean, not a you know 
crap, I've done something wrong, or you know, you know that she definitely wants the best and she knows you can do better and yeah. she just wants you to do the best. I'm always of the opinion that like if a coach or a player or someone doesn't talk to you or they withdraw or they're not bothering to correct anything, then then they no longer have an interest and they no longer care. Like yeah. I'd rather them be at me and on my case. It means they care. It means they think you're worthy of the improvement and you can do it. But I think the silence is much worse. I 100% agree, Claire, 100%. Hey, Josh, hey, Josh I yeah. think I remember us having a coach similar to that once. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I've, I've had I've had plenty over the years. So, um, no, yeah, we, you, we you, swear you, that coach never had put a pair of football boots on in his life. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely something that I grew up with. And as I said, you know, when the coach sort of comes in and he just goes, right, if I'm yelling at you, consider it a good thing. If I'm yeah. not, you may as well be looking for another club because that's pretty much yeah. Yeah. I've had so many I mean, coaches come in yeah. like that. I was the same. Um, I mean, my my biggest critic was always my dad who trained me in the early years as, as my coach. And then when I made big rep, you know, as an early teenager, he was running the line and still shouting abuse at me. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it's a good thing. My mum was like that as well. <laughs> Just yell abuse. I'm about to say, line. Josh, you've seen my dad run the line. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I love yell abuse. Even, even oh, my yeah. son. I've got plenty of abuse. Um, Obviously, I suppose Luke brought in a good one as well there as well, which um, I totally forgot. And where the hell? Did Is it about Tara's go? testimonial? Tara's, yeah. Well, Tara, obviously, um, she's been there for a long time. I think it's like 2009, <laughs> 15 years of age playing. Um, what's it like playing with someone like that who obviously just, yeah, again, let's be honest, I feel could have gone places and you know could have probably been playing somewhere a little bit more higher up. Um, what's it like playing with her? <laughs> Test. I love Tara. Tara is just that soul that you can go to and talk to, and she's so supportive and so like, and she's got this like cheeky side to her as well that some people just don't see, and I love it. Um, but she's also just that like that solid support up front. Like you always know where she is. She's always that reliable source, and yeah, she's really incredible to play with. And yeah, I love playing with Tars. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think she's also. I think she she a lawyer solicitor as well he's an engineer engineer yeah. engineer that's, that's right. right engineer yeah that's right and yeah. um well that's, that's the next thing i was going to talk to you about obviously clear yourself um you know you studied 24 you just um become a lawyer is that correct yeah i'm a solicitor, solicitor. criminal yeah. lawyer yeah criminal lawyer. yeah um obviously what's that like obviously you know studying full-time obviously trying to think of um, life after football, but obviously it's still at the same time, um, you know, trying to train and play and do everything else. Yeah, it was, it. I mean, during uni, it was it was difficult. I won't lie. I'm also living out of home, so I had to work and, you know, put food on the table and pay the rent all for myself kind of thing. And I don't have any family here. So, you know, it was managing, you know, the life stuff and then study a double degree and, still rock up to training and know that you're behind a goalkeeper and, you know, if you're going to rock up and put the effort in, then you're going to have to do it. Otherwise, you just waste your time. So there was a lot of sacrifices and it was hard, but uh, I finished uni in November last year and I, I thought about going overseas and seeing what I could do with my soccer, but um, as a female and in the legal profession, it's a lot to weigh up whether you put your legal profession and career on hold for your football career um, and whether then getting back into the legal profession will be as easy, um, mm. you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Um, I also blessed with a really good boss and, you know, she's just lets me do my thing and understands football there and, um, I mean, I mean it, it was it's every each to their own with careers, and I think Tara is in a similar position. You know, she's got a great engineering job, and we know that probably the two of us could be overseas and could be excelling our football careers a little bit further. But we have weighed up that decision to balance it as best we can to try and get the best out of both. Um, and, you know, it's something you just got to be content with. Yes, there's like moments where I thought, ah, 
could be overseas and I'll just come back to law later. But, you know, it's about the longevity of the career that's going to last longer and that's being a lawyer. And I, I love it. I, you know, learned so much as a criminal lawyer and mm. getting stuck in and getting in court. It, at the same time, it's just as rewarding as playing. So I think for me, I'm grateful that I can do both and didn't have to give up one for the other. Yeah, I suppose at the end of the day as well, you're only 24, still plenty of years left to possibly, if you do decide to go down that road and chase a dream, yeah. overseas, it's, it's still there. It's not like you're 34. Yeah, I've, I've never ruled, ruled anything yeah. out, but I, um, you know, studied for five years. I just wanted to get get started and actually see and test myself in the legal world and I'm, I'm loving it. It's, yeah, yeah, quite enjoyable. It's challenging, but it, um, I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> It, as long as you're enjoying it, that's, that's all that matters. So, Tess, yeah. obviously yourself, um, Broadmeadow, uh, performing arts, I believe, is where you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh... I went to the um, amazing school of Hunter School of Performing Arts. So I actually pro- did love it. It's an amazing school. Um, Before we go too far into it, don't you dare. There's so many. No, there's so many. Obviously options you had you know what i mean you could go there for drama and everything else or you could I, I don't know if you could just actually go there if you're in the area i'm not too sure mm-hmm. nope. you had to go there for something yeah you had to audition for either dance drama or music so w- w- were you part of the marching koalas no <laughs> so the marching, ah, the marching koalas is a whole different organization they're not ah. the school at all however i was in our school marching band there it is <laughs> In the band too at school. I was in three, four bands at school. I was yeah. in the marching band, the concert yeah. band, stage band, and choir. And what 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 were we playing? The triangle, something a little bit more sophisticated. <laughs> um, I played the flute, so it's the there one that go. goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> the flute. <laughs> Very good. What about yourself, Claire? You're saying you're in the band? Um, yeah, I played flute in the concert band and then trumpet in the jazz band and then French horn in the um, Port and Quarry yeah. town band. You! <laughs> yeah. It's going from a smaller one to a bigger one to a bigger one. <laughs> yeah. Just got bored. Got bored. Oh, yeah. So did you go there for music? Um, to, uh, yeah. 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 yeah music. Fair enough. There we go. <laughs> so I, I only live like just around the corner from it. And I was just like, eh. <laughs> it was never my, I was never going there for that. <laughs> I just wish I had the opportunity to go to a school like that here in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. I had to do, Ben's... I had to do things the hard way. Yeah, ben, Ben's very much in the theater game. <laughs> Loves them. I, dan- I, I, I danced for 20 years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Plenty of concerts, plenty of gigs. The, high, sure. the yeah. highlight was um, backup dancer for one of Pink's tours here in Australia. You're kidding. Nope. Oh, damn. I was okay. 20, 21. Back then. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> and then swiftly left the game very quickly after it. <laughs> it's like, right, we've had, we've had our fun. I don't intend to make a career off this because it's too unstable. Let's do something else. So... I basically finished studying. I got a diploma of live production theatre and events, so I'm a qualified theatre technician. So I do that yeah. casually. Um, and yeah, I'm working a pleb job now as a forklift driver. <laughs> Dude, I have my forklift license too. Yes. Tess, <laughs> I don't want to see you on a forklift. <laughs> I'm actually the best. Everyone at work. Oh yes. To me, to get yes. the I'm getting on the no. getting on the lorry. I'm getting on the lorry. Next forklift that needs something that needs unloaded. There, we're getting <laughs> yes. out there. Get that thing off. Get everyone around. Get the confidence. Um, Luke's just put in here and saying that obviously because you didn't celebrate the amazing fluke goal, the um the next mm-hmm. celebration should be like a little flute. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> something so, something different <laughs> um what what about your career Tess? what what were you studying are you doing are you thinking of that far ahead or 
Um, so I graduated school this time last year. Um, yeah. And I went to uni for three days. Nice. And decided that it wasn't quite my time to be at uni. So I've deferred for a year and I've just been working um, just in admin as a receptionist um, for this year. Um, and I'm not sure what next year will hold. I've enrolled back in uni, but I might redefer. My <laughs> my dilemma <laughs> is I don't know what I want to study. So Fair we're kind of just in the air being useful, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I did the same thing. I did the same thing. If you don't need to. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did the same thing. I worked for a few years and then didn't go and de- get my diploma until I was like 21. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what I'm thinking I may be doing. Because hopefully by then I'll have a better idea of what I want to do. Yeah. Like after football, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, um, the question obviously we'd like to ask everyone who's on is where do you see yourself in five years? Do you happy where you are in the A-League? Uh, obviously, we've got that from Claire that she's pretty happy where she is at the moment, just sort of working and playing away around here. Tess, what about yourself? Where do you see yourself in five years? Do you want is ambitions to get overseas like some of the players you've played with or happy? My dream would to be – would to – well, English. My dream is to be <laughs> – A bit of theatre from Broadway over four minutes there, to be or not to be. <laughs> um, no, to be in Europe. I would love to live, yep. especially in France. That's just like my dream country. Just for a couple of years, like not full-time or forever. Um, but that's where I hope to be within the next couple of years. Um, but if I can still be in the W League, this is like home. It's like everything is what made me me. So yeah. I would still like to be, like if I can do both somehow, like kind of off-season kind of juggling, that would be the dream. Um but yeah, in five years, Europe, hopefully. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> if it's in France, you knock Ali Carpenter out of that right back spot at the on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of the day, obviously, the um, the Australian girls are obviously getting plenty of ex- exposure over over in Europe at the moment. Obviously, it's good to see. It's good to see so many, yes. obviously, the, the Matildas and stuff like that getting chances overseas. Um, <laughs> Emily, obviously, at West Ham, scored the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all they're all getting around over there. Jacinta, Mackenzie Arnold, Hazel Razo, Razo the heaps, heaps yeah. of them, which is great. It's good to see, you know. It's especially with the World Cup coming up. It's what we need. Mm. Yeah, we need more girls over there. Yeah, you know, as much as we need, obviously improvement in the W League, but um, in our own country. But you know, if we're, it's no different to the men. You know what I mean? You you yes. want to be overseas. You want to be in, competing with the best. Um, again, let's be honest. It's where the money is. Um, <laughs> like you've got to think about it and obviously the money's there as well which is a bonus and um, oh, I think the training the training over there compared to no no offence to anyone who's in coaching over here and stuff like that but the training over there you it's a different price. level it's a different level and I suppose they want so much more obviously out of you guys um, and, and they're not on anyway, four month contracts and they're not on four month yeah you get, it, you get a full 12 month contract yeah <laughs> <laughs> how good's that um, anyone else got anything in the chat? We are going to slowly wrap it up. We're going to talk a little bit, obviously, about apparently, academies. Apparently, Tess is going to be tasked with pulling everything out of the back of Brent's van. <laughs> um, one thing I want to do before we go into academies and stuff like that is get your thoughts, Claire, on... Um, oh, I've just totally forgotten it. Uh, Andrew Goldman, uh, the goalkeeping oh, coach. Yeah, Goldie. Yeah, he's great. What, what, what's he like? Um, what's he like? No, Goldie's great. He uh, he's probably one of the most detailed coaches going around from like watching film on not just the goalkeepers and the, and things like that, but all over the park. And he can you know find deficiencies in other teams through film, um, and he lets all the players know that and helps them for each preparation. Um, He's straight up honest, like with things, and um, him and I have built a really good relationship the past few years. Um, I coach with him at his academy as well, so um, he's great. I probably get a phone call at least every day from him, just talking football or life. Um, he, he's very much of a well-rounded approach as well, like in you know making sure that the kids off the field and things like that are 
just as comfortable on the field, um, but also likes to challenge us a bit outside our comfort zone. And yeah. that, I think last season for the first few games, he just let me, you know, just do my thing and not play it safe, but, you know, wasn't taking as much risks. And then mm-hmm. as I slowly got comfortable playing, he'd put the little pressure on me a bit more and be like, okay, this week, you know, you need to play a bit higher or you need to start winning the ball in that area. Now, for defenders, now that's for you to win. Yeah. So, yeah, he's been great. Um, very detailed. Hates if you've got a ball that's not pumped up. So Tess and the young ones learned that pretty quickly. If it's not pumped up, it'll be kicked 50, 60 metres. Yeah. Um, and you'll be chasing a, a flat ball and you'll be told in those uncertain terms. Um, no, but he, him and I have always had a good relationship and yeah. even still with Brit, the three of us still communicate and keep tabs on each other. So uh, he's a good good person to have at the club. Yeah. yeah um, obviously, we're going to quickly talk about a bit, a bit about the youth and everything else um, and then obviously a little bit about the World Cup and so forth coming up. Uh, are there any potential people... St- coming to snag your spot in the academy? Is there, who, who, are the, who are the new up-and-comers? Is there anyone coming through that you think? Uh, Tiana Robinson is probably the next goalkeeper to come out of the academy, um, yep. which I'd love to see. And, you know, if, if she's signed in the future, I'd love to have her as my second and want her, you know, like I'd love the day where I retire and, she walks on for me like that. Yeah, she's um, worked with her for many years. She becomes like a little sister kind of thing. So, mm. um, yeah, she well and truly is hardworking and is patient and biding her time. So, yeah, she's someone from the academy that I would very much like to see um, get a chance in the years to come. Yeah, what about you, Tess? Any, anyone in the academy that doesn't matter what position and you think... Definitely got it, and we could see shortly. Um, yeah, there's a good chunk of girls that um are coming through. It's tough sometimes, like which ones are coming because girls jump ages. They might be 15 and playing in opens, and like it's tough to know when. But there's a there's yeah a good couple of girls coming through, and they're gonna be some real like solid players when they come through, and they're gonna be really good assets to the W League. When they come through, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Up yeah. to them. <laughs> but, um, no, for sure, there's some really, really solid girls coming through. Yeah. It was more, more, more so of a question just to see if our academy coaches are doing their job. Um, oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they've got a hard job. Oh, yeah. yeah 100%. There's so many kids and that's it. They they jump age groups and one week they could be have the best game of their life and you go, oh, sh- that's all right. And then they sort of go back into their shell a bit. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Got to work that out of them. But yeah. Um, what are some of the things, Tess, obviously about the academy that Im- helped you improve to where you are? Um, I think having the older girls, someone to always look up to was yeah. really, really nice. Um, I know a lot of the girls uh, like Claire and Libby and all that didn't necessarily have, or well, they did, but I guess not as strong as my, connection with the older girls or not connection but like yeah. how much I could look up to them yeah. um so I think that really helps and um having generally the academy like to have one kind of older girl that's in the W league there for the girls and at, at the moment it's me I'm not sure who it's going to be next year uh, it could be me again next year I'm not sure <laughs> but yeah so I think that really helps I also think a lot of the girls that you have in the academy you've spent a lot of time with like a lot of my girls that I've got in my team now I've grown up with and they are family and so when like when you're down or you're not really feeling like you want to play anymore they're always going to be there to pick you up and keep you like motivated and support and like or like just give it to you straight like Tess you had a really shit game like you got to work on this um so I think that's what makes or what that's why I love the academy, the family nature of it. Um, yep. And that's what, I guess, brings girls up and through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. 
as Clay, obviously, I'm not sure if you obviously went through the whole academy process and that, but you're coaching, obviously, through the gold, through um, I think it's is it gold, golden Goldman Academy, yeah. yeah. Um, I played, yeah, I played for Mid North Post, and then I did two years with the academy, but I actually played last year as an overage player with the girls in the academy. Um, so. Yeah, I, 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 like Tessa was saying about having that leader role or next, I think it's also like it's it's important because um, it's important for the younger players to be able to connect with that player that's in a W League and not see that it's such a big disjointed thing or there's a um, imbalance between. So even when I'm out there training now with the academy, I always make sure that. Um, you know, I do connect with those younger ones or if one of them has an injury, just, you know, I might not even know them, but just ask them how their rehab is and things like that. Um, yeah. Then I train, I coach with um, Andrew Goldman in the Goldman Academy. So we look after any any goalkeeper in the Newcastle area who comes. Um, we do sessions from 8th to 12th, 13th to 15, 16 to 18 private sessions, um, the SAP kids and things like that. So um, being on the other side as well, it, it's nice to give back. Um, yeah. It's also fun that, you know, to see those kids improve. Like, and even if they're at the community level, that they're showing up every week to goalkeeper training. It just, it's something that is so rewarding to do and that they're making improvements and I've been a part of that. So, yeah, I do like that few hours a week where I get to coach and give back. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, as I said, hopefully we can definitely get the academies pumping and thriving with a lot more double, uh, mm. enough talent. Um, yeah. Tess, obviously, before we go, obviously we've got to talk about your international career. It's been, so under 16s, under 20s as well. A few games there. What's it, what's it, what was it like putting on the Australian shirt, representing obviously your country? It was amazing. I think my favorite thing was like just traveling with the girls and being with them 24/7. Like, don't get me wrong, the games were incredible. Meeting people from around the world, seeing the different styles, like being able to put the jersey on and be like, I am, I am representing my country, but the girls that you meet from around Australia and the connections you form. And yeah, it was, that was just my favorite part because I have friends for life in those, from those teams. And it was interesting because you always, like I wasn't in every single set that traveled and like a lot of the girls didn't do every single travel. So you always met yep. someone new, which was really nice. And, um, yep. but no, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And they taught me a lot of independence because there was no family and at 16 like you kind of had to almost inhabit a new family because yeah. you were away from yours for so long um mm. and yeah I learned a lot about myself a lot about my like my game what works for me what doesn't work for me I it was also really nice getting away or well, not getting away but getting another interpretation from another coach like different yeah. import yeah. um yeah all of that it was yeah incredible experience <laughs> Yeah, Aiden no, um, brings up a very good question there. Which yep. team are you girls most looking forward to versing in the next season? Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah, we've got some revenge to sort <laughs> out from the from last year of uh, that final match in a wooden spoon. I think. Yeah, well, that's that's true, Kylo. It, it doesn't sit nicely. I was about to say. <laughs> Them sounds like fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> so, same test, or are you thinking of another club as well? I don't know. I, I get where Claire's coming from. I like the um, the kind of revenge part of it. But then I also, oh, I also kind of want to verse Melbourne City and just be like a big fuck you kind of thing. And <laughs> yeah, <win>. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you know what, Joshy? We'll be there for it. Hopefully, if Daniel Andrews lets us out. Yeah, if Dan, if Dan Andrews lets us out. <laughs> if, if, we, if he allows, allows crowds down to, um, down, down to watch them, absolutely. Um, obviously, we've got a couple of questions here before we let you go. What do we got? Uh, there's one there before I come in. Did you, did you go to inter interesting countries while on international duty, Tess? 
Yeah, so I was lucky enough to go. Well, I went to Thailand twice, mm. one with the juniors, so the under 16s, and one with the young, which was the under 20s. Yep. Um, and I also went somewhere else, and I'm having a mind blank. <laughs> I went somewhere else. <laughs> Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. Yeah, and I think, I think that may have been all. There was another one, and I just cannot remember. That was probably something say, important. Yeah, about to say, lucky you. I've only been to Thailand once. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the missus want to go back. I didn't get to really see the country. I got to see the hotel room and the bus ride to and from the field. Oh, so there you go. you got to shop in Thailand. Sorry? You've got a shop in Thailand. Oh, I think we got a 20 minute. Like, oh, my mom just texted me. Myanmar is the other place I went to. Ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> over it. There it is. There it is. Make, make sure we'll send her that clip from uh, the interview, obviously, for your 21st. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so, obviously, Got these last couple of questions here for both of you. Uh, Claire, we'll start with you. Goals for the upcoming season for you. What are your personal goals? Uh, play every game again and just try and bank a few more clean sheets or just like definitely some more wins. But yeah, I, as long as I perform and stay on the park every week, I, I'm sure the rest will sort of come. Uh, Tess? Goals. Goals, goals. Um, I think... Other than scoring them, Tess. Other than... <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just being like a, a strong defender and attacker, trying to contribute um, to both as much as I can, especially being on the wing. Um, and working my butt off, being a player that people really admire for the work ethic. Um, and yeah, just... Being a player that people want on the pitch, not just that she's there kind of thing. And I think a personal goal would just be to just be stronger in general in the back. I feel like sometimes, yeah. personally, I find I'm like a little twig and I just get pushed off the ball. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think just be stronger back there and be like a solid defender is a goal of mine. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, there was one more in here. Where was it? Who's the, who's the practical joker of the team? That's what I was going. Yeah, so yeah, who's the practical joker uh, in the in the locker room? Brewer. Brewer. <laughs> Brewer. <laughs> yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Who's got who's got the worst habits? Who's got the worst pre game rit pre game ritual or something that they've got to wear before they, when they get uh, training? Or I roomed with um, Claire Wheeler, and we'd always have a nap. <laughs> Like, we'd always have a nap and a cup of tea. We were like old women. Um, <laughs> or we'd play banana grams, like nice. Scrabble. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah, we we were the odd ones. I think. Uh, I can imagine Tess has been the one that just can't sit still. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just so revved <laughs> up, just let's go already. He's banging on the ref's door. Hurry up! <laughs> Me and Twenty Bunna. minutes of kick off test, calm down. That's all right. Good have now. A little dance party. We're like, woo! Yeah. Boombox clear. Boom you box. two were always full of energy. <laughs> yeah. And then Wheeler and I were like, <laughs> Did you bring the tea bags? Yeah, yeah. got the sugar. We're good. Is, is it is it can be nap Honestly. time now, please? <laughs> yeah, the best one is the hotel at Melbourne has the double blackout blinds. Oh, yeah. So as, as soon as a, a Melbourne trip, Wheeler and I are like, yes, best nap coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you're walking down the hallway to Tessa's room and shut up. <laughs> yeah. Don't have a cup of tea and have a nap, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> nah, too easy, guys. Thank you very much for jumping on and giving us a little bit um, of the insight of what you guys have done so far. And obviously, mate, continue. Um, continue. Long, mate, continue. Ho hopefully here at the Jets for a little bit longer, at least. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you guys have a great season. Obviously, everyone in the chat, if you are allowed, 
Um, so not like us at the moment, who can't go anywhere, but be sure to get down and support the girls. It is very important that we guys that we give these guys obviously the most support we can. Um, maybe a few more double headers. Um, I know from obviously previous comments, you guys do enjoy number two sports ground feel mm-hmm. and obviously having your own sort of stadium. Um, do we, is that the case for both of you? Do you enjoy playing on your own or do you like the double header at the stadium? Um, yeah, I like number two. Yeah. Yeah. Not like girls, when we get a real good crowd there. Yeah. There's not many girls that we get on that don't really say that. They'll say otherwise. It's, yeah, there's the whole thing. It's smaller. Yeah. Get more people packed around the fans. Um, and, yeah. yeah. You really get I think, I think number two is just a bit more intimate. And that's sort of what yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah. You have a heaps, like an amazing atmosphere at number two. Although, I love the the connection between the A League and the W League when we have the double headers because it's kind of like one club instead of individual. So they've both got pros. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean yeah. they're they're the sort of games me and Josh leave the pub early for. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, weird. Looks yeah, and they sometimes. all yeah, yeah weird games. looks. are like, oh, where are you going? The games are on for three hours. Um, the women are playing and we want to watch. Yeah, yeah I was going to say you're not going to support <laughs> the girls. Yeah, you're not going to support the girls. Jeez. Pay an extra two dollars, yeah. you tight ass, for a beer. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, show them support. Yeah, you can get, you can get beer here. at the stadium. It's no different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Buddy, um, a few obviously in here. Um, what have we got here? Mobile gaming. Um, said to say hello. Mary Brennan has said good day. How are you? Uh, Lockie Ma was hello. in. Here. If you guys need any glasses, sunnies, spectacles, or anything like that, be sure to head down and see Lockie oh. and Gabriel Ma optometrist. He will look Ooh. after you. I promise you. Um, I might might need some new contact for the <laughs> season, actually. Oh, there you go, go Lucky. There you go. Um, they are lost. Gabriel, Gabriel Mar, optometrist at Jesmond. Um, head down to see Lachlan. Honestly, honestly, Claire, he'll look after you. And yeah, they're, they're great down there. Him and his dad run the yeah. business down there. Josh, brilliant. you're not wearing your specs. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, sorry, Lock. Sorry. You know, be sure blue light spectacles. There we go, guys. <laughs> My bad. I don't wear glasses. It's not sort of a normal for me. I don't, you know. The but amount good. for the amount that I sit in front of a computer screen, I really yeah. should. You should. You, you. I told you. Yeah, I, I just wear. Yeah. I just wear <laughs> one contact in my left eye. <laughs> really? Yeah. Doesn't that make the other ones weaker or? <laughs> no, like the other. My right eye is great. <laughs> All right, lock. Get it, lock. Sort her out for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Get that sorted. Um, anyway, guys, yeah. as we said, everyone in here is saying thank you. Con- um, good luck for the season, obviously. And, um, yeah, hopefully, Tess, you score a few more goals, a few more celebrations. Um, yes. Ho- hopefully a few more go in this year that you actually know about. And you can, and you can get excited like everyone else at the same time and not an hour later. You can turn around to Tara and go, yeah, I meant that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew that was going in. <laughs> that was good. So, now, nah, honestly, guys, thank you very much. We'll let these guys go. Um, hey, we'll, we'll speak to you at some point. Good luck. Pre-season starts in a couple thank of weeks. You. So get thank to jogging. Guys. Beat oh, test thank you. coming up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take it easy, guys. Take it See easy. See you later. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> there you go, guys. Big thanks, obviously, Tess and oh, Claire God. for jumping in. Absolute crackers. Um, Lockie, there you go, mate. You're going to get much better than that. I'm sure Claire will pop down and see it. One, one, one contact in one. That's just classic. That's weird. But in my, I'm picturing that in my head. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, surely the other eye that would be, you'd be doing obviously a lot more work then. And then the other one's not. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. Like, it's just, yeah, it's just sort of a, okay, you get it. One's lazier than the other but then if you pump the other one up but you're not helping the other one yeah and the other one's gonna drop this. anyway don't mind me i'm trying to fix the video call now because it was set up for four people and now it's dropped to just two and it's all over the shop because i have to no nah, that's, that's all right obviously i'll just um yeah but anyway what do we got here all the best to ash to ash wills and yes Absolutely, Matt. Um, I will obviously try and get Ash on. Um, we'll see how we go. We've still got a couple of weeks before preseason, so maybe. Um, <laughs> Lukey go. boy, come, Lukey boy comes in. Scott McTominay played the first half of a Champions League game with one eye. Guess what? 
Lawrence Thomas played the last 15 minutes of an A-League Grand Final with no eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you flog. Well done, Roy. <laughs> um, my right eye is nearly perfect, but my left eye is nearly blind. Mary, Gabrielle Mark Tomatrist, go down there. But no, guys, in, in all in all seriousness, ladies and gents, in all seriousness. If Actually, you before do... you go into that, before you go into that quickly, um, yes, yes, you will be able to go down and watch the girls train. Yes, get down there. If you've got time, get down there. Okay, that, that's Before. that's a brilliant segue because I was about to say, ladies and gentlemen in the chat, please, I implore you, ladies and gentlemen, if you can and you are available to get down to a W League game for the Jets, do it. Oh, 100%. Do it. 100%. Yeah, it is well worth the experience. They deserve yeah. just as much of a following, if not more, than what the A-League boys do. Yeah, yeah, and much better if you if you are watching that game in a non A League environment. Yes, yes, in a non in a non A League stadium. I mean, don't get me wrong, Amy Parks. We're probably lucky here that Amy Parks not too bad of a stadium to watch W League games in. Mm. No, no, I've just shown uh, I've just shown it on camera. There's no point in guessing tonight, Adrian, uh, freaking Aiden, because it's pizza. Uh, Oh, you dickhead. Um, Mary, I'm not too sure. Obviously, the season, uh, pre-season do doesn't start until um, obviously a couple of weeks. I, I Honestly, if, if it's the same sort of scenario as the men, they usually have a light session in the morning. Yeah. And then they'll have an Arvo session as well. Um, I mean, I think I think I remember um, Tara telling us that they tend to train in the afternoons because a lot of them are at work. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, so they do a light session in the morning. So for people who definitely can turn up yeah days off whatever um and obviously go probably go over plays and obviously videos and Marty does but then obviously the afternoons four o'clock onwards yeah straight into it um i had pizza too there you go but mary yeah we'll find out we'll find out once they yeah. start training and that and we'll, we'll we'll message them and get an idea and so these guys can head down there because it is a great way a great way to catch them obviously you know in their own environment and Obviously, you know, again. Or or throw or throw a quick message to um Toddy. He's generally all around that. Yeah, well Toddy Blackwell Toddy exactly Blackwell's all, all around. He's that. down there all the time. He's down there all the time. He'll know what's going on. Yeah, because the women need to have a day job. Exactly, yeah. Mary, exactly. I'm with but you. I'm with you. But they shouldn't Cap's have to. Yeah. If they are pro if yeah. they are pro a professional footballer in this country, they yeah. shouldn't have to. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You are representing your, your state, your town. It, it is the highest. Whatever. It is the highest you can go in the footballing pyramid for for a for a, a female in this country. Why should they have to supplement themselves with a day job? That's yeah. not right. No, it's it's by far by far not right. Um, and it needs to change and everything else. But we'll obviously. Hopefully, it does after the World Cup. I think the World Cup's going to be massive. It's going to be massive exposure for the country, and I think it needs to happen. We'll see it happen before that, um, because I don't think you'd want any major country coming over here, walking into a, a, a scenario where we're like, you know, because they, they're going to talk to Australians. They're going to talk to the Matildas and everything else and the Kiwis and shit like that. It's not like they're going to be, you know, yeah, they, they've got friends, and obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's the Matildas we're talking about. It's not yeah. um, the, the clubs. So yeah, you, you, Emily Van Egmonts and all these, all these now overseas um, Matildas are going to be are playing against the players that will be playing over here mm. in the World Cup. And I get they're probably talking about it now. Oh, what's the A League like? It's a shit show. Oh, sorry, what's the W League? What's the W League like? It's a shit show. The A League's a shit show. The W League's a shit show. Freaking, we got we only get paid for four months, and then we have got to find another job or freaking find another country to play in for six months or whatever it is. I mean, I mean, Bloody fair call. The American girls probably think it's a working holiday. Well, they do. Of course they do. The season finishes or whatever it is, and they could probably still... And it's a good way for them to keep fit during their off-season. Oh, yeah, but that's the thing, though. For, it's not. It doesn't end over there for them. That's the thing. They've got summer leagues and everything. It's yeah. just... they they. It's more competitive if they... You know, the A-League at that time... The W-League. Yes, sorry. The mm. W League will be more competitive, yeah, at that time than playing in the summer league. It's like summer basketball. That's why the pros don't go play there. I mean, <laughs> I remember because... when Britt had her first stint at the Jets. Yeah, she was the number two at Portland. 
she came yeah, out but... here. She came out here to put herself in, basically, in the face of the Portland manager to go, hey, yeah. I'm ready for this. And then after her doing this into the Jets and performing so well, the the first choice keeper at Portland, I think she left and went to Utah Royals. Yeah. And then Britt became the number one at the Thorns. That's when Ellie and Haley were playing at the Thorns. Because mm. they signed Ellie not long after Britt went back. And yeah. they, they won the bloody league. Uh, yeah, I've seen Toddy at men's training because of COVID. Not sure if the public is allowed to watch him. I, I don't see why not, as long as you're keeping your 1.5 your one point five metres. Yeah, these guys are pretty relaxed up there at the moment. So as long as you're sitting on the grass or whatever it is and nowhere near them. I'll... But let's just let's just say something here, Joshy. Let's just have a big, ha-ha, we told you so. It's all gave a shit, you know, you three and a half months ago because, you know, Victorians were doing it rough. Guess what, you guys in New South Wales? You guys, for the past week, have had more cases, daily cases than what we had. Yeah, the boys. We had a zero day yesterday. We do, we sure did. No, we're not talking specifically Newcastle, Luke. We're talking about the entire, no, no. The entire state of New South Wales. In general. Don't play that card, Luke. You fall under New South Wales, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not playing the Melton card over freaking the whole of still because we had bloody, we've had none for a freaking... Thanks, do- thanks for doxing us. Yeah, no, live on, on no 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 you just dox us just live on stream yeah thanks mate good on you uh what do we got? no you did new uni was a covid testing hub so no one was allowed in the uni uni camp. Camp. oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah not too sure not too sure we yeah i mean one. just one just out. just reach out to toddy he'll know yeah if i was gonna say if you i'm got pretty sure he has been back at training he has he has yeah. he was down there the other day yeah because they have fun um, with him yeah so um, yeah, if you got if you got him on Facebook, um, hit him up, ask him. If not, let us know, and we'll hit him up for you. It's no problem. Todd yeah. is a good bloke, and he'll let us know for sure. Todd is a top. Um, other than that, guys, we are going to wrap it up here. Um, we do thank everyone for jumping on tonight. Obviously, do have a chat with the girls. Um, it's 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 good to see. It's good to see the girls are obviously upbeat and everything else, and they they they, they just want to get out and obviously play football. Um, there's nothing worse obviously than sitting back doing nothing. Um, you know, it's just pretty shit. Let's well, I mean, honest. they're working, but well, yeah, but I'm sure they'd rather be playing football freaking week in week out. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. there's always there's always five aside. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, five aside, bloody hell. Um, but yeah, look, as I said, guys, we're gonna leave it here. We hope to have um a few, obviously. New Jets news fanage. I have one thing to say to you, and it's right here on this button. He's gone! We hate Coast Gun. No. He's gone! He's just gone. Fitzy gone. He's gone! (laughs) (laughs) That button has finally come in handy. Yeah, the boy. (laughs) Every time. Every time a player goes. I'm sorry. I saw, I think it was um, Aiden who tagged me in that post this morning. Their announcement photo. Yeah. Mate, my my six year old could have done a better job in Microsoft Paint than what they put out. I reckon yeah. I could have spent fifteen minutes in in Photoshop and done a better reveal than that. I mean, look at our podcast background. <laughs> Thanks, Newcastle Jets. Thanks, Jets. <laughs> oh, I still had to fix parts of it and make it blend, but you'd never know. Yeah, you'd never know. Um, what was I going to say? So, yeah. So, hopefully, I don't know if we'll have two next week. We'll definitely have the one podcast on next week with um, Nathan Plaskett. So, Ooh, again, I, I don't... Can you hear that? I don't... Can you hear that? No. That's everybody on their phones Googling who that is. <laughs> Be sure. Do it. Hmm? Nathan, Nathan Plaskett. Nathan Plaskett is his name. He is an Aussie. He is currently, I'm pretty sure I said this the other day, but everyone who wasn't here or didn't hear me, um, he's currently working with Derby County in the championship over there in England. Um, so let's be honest, an absolute great feat to get anywhere near that. Um, mm-hmm. It's a testimonial to obviously how good he is and what he does. Um, 
So yeah, it'd be good to obviously get an insight to what it's like over in Europe at the moment. Again, with everything, COVID um, is a big thing at the moment, um, and it's completely different. We you know we think we've got it hard here. Imagine what they got it over there. Like players in their teams and that are getting and having to miss games and getting tested every freaking day. Bugger that. <laughs> One swab for me was enough to say I'm good, not getting COVID. But He's been it. around. He's been around the A League. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he's been around the A League. Um, uh, he's, he's been in the A League. He's been AIS. He's been FFA. He's been New South Wales Rugby League. Yep. West Tigers. Yes. He's been around the traps. Yeah. How old is he? He's um. He's not that old either. I'm on his LinkedIn. I don't think so. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't think he's that old to be either. uh, To be honest, either. But yeah, um, it'd be be good to have an insight. Obviously, again, into what it's like. Um, Again, how different it is compared to rugby league. Again, it's we're not a rugby league podcast. How different it is to the A League. Absolutely, which is a great insight. Obviously, to what it's what it's like. You know, Mm -hmm. how how much of a step up. Again, we know it's a step up, but how big of a step up? Yeah, what's, what's the, the difference point, in you know? regiment? How more? How much more regimented it is? Yeah, that's it. What what goes through a training session? You got know, to think as well. Obviously, I've, I've watched so many documentaries on the Premier League and mm. European football and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, I mean, these guys are frigging. They're, they're at the stadium all day. Yeah, every day. Yeah, they 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 rock up at nine a.m. in their basic frigging tracksuit. They go in. They have a shower. They frigging get dressed into some more of a plain attire and training shit. They sit down, they all have breakfast together, and then they go in and they get tests and everything else. Mm-hmm. And at 11 o'clock, these are rough times, 11 o'clock they go out and they freaking might have a video program of freaking what happened. or And that's, and that's just not, not just the EPL. Birmingham did the same thing at Waste Hill. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm talking European. Third division. Yeah. Third division. I was talking to Batesy. I was talking to Guy Bates, friggin' mm. one of the first podcasts we ever done yeah. off air and talking to him. He played in frickin' non-league Irish football. Yeah. And he would be the professional, obviously yeah. get paid full time for it. But he would be there all day. All day. You get test after test, random blood tests for frickin' Christ knows what reason yeah. you get a blood test. Just shit like that. The A League boys don't get that. No. They're there for five hours if they're lucky. Mm. I'm available yeah, like, to coach the Jets A League side if needed. I think that job falls to Joshy Boy, considering um uh, his scouting contracts all but gone. Ah, uh, should be right, man. Just waiting for him to kill, waiting for him to message me. <laughs> Off to Western Sydney, apparently. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not liking your chances of a response. Oh. <laughs> don't ex- don't considering ex- considering we don't have an email for him anymore. Yeah, I know. I wonder if we can use the exact same scenario and just put Western Sydney Wanderers at the end and say they're all the same. <laughs> Could you imagine that? You might be able to ping him on Discord. I don't like your chances, though. Yeah, no. Nah. What do you what do you, what do you reckon, though? If we can just the same, just take out the take out the club name at the end. No, you just <laughs> find out what the extension is for Western Sydney Wanderers. Yeah. Or um, so how we have. I think it's at Newcastle Jets. Yeah. Theirs might be at Western Sydney or at WSW. At. Yeah. You're just going to find the last section and just That's try it. Yeah. Those two Jets ladies will play well this up and coming season. Absolutely, Matt. I Absolutely. hope so. And now that we're off stream, uh, well, well, sort of off stream, I can say it. I didn't, I didn't fangirl once. <laughs> uh Chains very hard with Goldie. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it, she she's she's going to be definitely something to watch. She's improving every year. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Chester, obviously, player of the year. Claire, uh, Tess, on the other hand, Tess Tess is something special. Tess yeah. is going to be a very very good player, and unfortunately, um, I don't see her hanging around too much longer. Um, don't say that. No, no, fuck that. You've got to, you've got to call it where it is. Honestly, she does. She needs to be somewhere getting better training, playing better football in a better environment. Um, she's in. She set a five year goal to be in France. I reckon it'll be before that. I reckon three years. I mean, when I it comes to internationals, her ass, 
If you, I don't think she, I don't, it'd be very hard for her to make the international squad. Like, well, yeah, look at who she's up against. N- yeah, no disrespect to her, but um, yeah, the game I, takes, takes, but, takes but it's good for her. Her. But it's yeah. good for her because she could use that as drive. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, Ali, Ali Carpenter, like, to be brutally honest, came came out of nowhere over that over that three year period when she made her debut in um for Canberra. Mm. Within three years, she was basically an international playing in America and now is playing for Lyon. Yeah. Which have undoubtedly one of the strongest women's sides in the world. And I think I think it'll be good for Tess. Because she yeah. always knows that Ali's gonna be there and it's one of those I'm gonna push. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna be better. I'm going to take her spot. And I hope she does. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. As much um, as well as I have a soft spot for Ellie Carpenter. Expecting that salute celebration. Gabriel Marv Thomas's Jesuit Children's Asian Supermarket. Absolutely. Yeah, get down there. Get down there. Enjoy. They um they do an absolute great job and obviously thanks to Lockie and his dad for um everything they do for me and Ben. Um and obviously for everyone else in Newcastle who goes there to get their spectacles. So anyway, guys, as I said, we're gonna leave it here. We're gonna wrap it up. We do thank everyone for jumping on. It's muchly appreciated. Not as many as we thought we'd get, but again, it just shows I haven't seen the numbers tonight. It's been zero all night for me. Oh, I don't know. It says six. It's not working. It's not working it's, for it's, me. Yeah, it's not going to be overly six, but again, um, I'll be going to the next F3 Derby. Bloody oath. Get in there, Matt. Get in there. Get in there um, but yeah, as I said, guys, thanks very much for walking. I was going to say watching and then Lockie popped up. Yeah, wa- <laughs> Just walking. went walking. Walking. Thanks, thanks, thanks Lukey. Thanks, Lockie, mate. Cheers, Cheers lads. Stevie, and lad have spoken to Stevie. He will be in contact with you, mate. He's coming to get some glasses from you. Um, as Laurie as McKenna part, for Lord Mayor of Newcastle. No, Laurie McKenna for yeah. fucking PM, mate. <laughs> um, no update on when opening open training sessions info from Todd. Okay, yeah. it'll be it'll be hard. It'll be hard at the moment and everything else. But that you'll get there. It'll start to slow down. Get leading into Christmas when they sort of start playing and suit. So. You'll get there. Get down there when you can, Mary. That's all you can do. Um, and obviously cheer them on and get behind them and obviously thank them. Thank them for everything they do. Not you know, As much as the A-League boys, but especially the W-League girls who obviously bust their ass between jobs wow. and obviously to perform for you guys on a weekly basis. So, well, here's the thing, mate. We need to start getting photos that we can use on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys get any photos, if you go down to training or if you get to games that obviously we can't get up there for and everything else, we're down in Melbourne. So we can't get to every home game. If you've got any photos and so forth, send them through to us. Um, crossbycapers at gmail.com.au. No. See? I said this last week. I said no. I said .com. I gmails, said .com. gmails do not have a geographical dot whatever after them. You they are just said, dot .com. You said to me freaking are you the other day. Don't no. Gmail.com. Uh, that is it. He's my Irish brother from another mother. <laughs> I had seven glasses of wine tonight. Beautiful, mate. Get in there, mate. Get in the wine. Happy make, sure you get Gmail. Gmail. make sure you get eight. Yeah, get another one. You're allowed. I'll, I'll let you have one. Current ones. Anyway, crossbycapers at gmail.com. Get on it. Be sure to send us through some photos. Um, we'll whack them up on the podcast and everything else of like a weekly segment even. You know, here's some photos from obviously fans out there from the from the weekend's game. We'd love that. Yeah. Love to see what you're up to and what you're Doing. It's fantastic because, as I said, we're in Victoria. We can't get up there every week. We will definitely be trying to get up to obviously every one that we can. We do here. We won't. We won't be there every. Oh, you're yeah, yeah, easy. Gear yeah, easy. Adelaide easy. Freaking six hours in a car done. Mm. Um, but again, Newcastle every week's a bit of a stretch. Um, even though I've got family there and obviously don't have cotton in for accommodation, but it's a stretch. Um, even more so with a baby on the way. Thank you, but Matt. Benny has always said it's just. Bugger off, Matt. I win. Bugger off. Hey, Matt. Looks like you have to buy yourself a pair of makers. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Dale wants to know when he's getting his copy of FIFA. He wants to play it on the long weekend. Yeah, not that much. <laughs> um, it's actually, actually, Lockie, if you're still there, mate, mum's dropping it off tomorrow. 
Um, if you can post that down on Monday or Saturday, if you're in on Saturday, that would be muchly appreciated. Thank you. Um, so he'll get it next week. Um, so he'll get it for the following Melbourne Cup. That thingy. Long Good, because he's got the RDO on Monday like me too. That's what I just said. So he'll get it for that long weekend. Anyway, uh, I'm saving up my bottle of Moet champion for when the Jets get new owners. Absolutely, Maddie, Get on um, the I wouldn't so, be. I wouldn't be popping it straight away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because the FFA, course. just because the FFA have done their due diligence, I haven't done my due diligence yet. <laughs> when I know who it is, then I can. How yeah, well? Yeah, how else did I find out that partial, uh, partial money of setting up Western United was funded by the club that I support in England? Bet you not a lot. Double lock bet, you, bet you a lot. Another, not a lot of people knew that. Charging was... double lock for those extra friggin' um, extra contacts, mate. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is the reason why we never get off frickin' air. Because <laughs> we get contact, we get more shit after more shit. Nah, we love it. We love it. Thank you guys very much for jumping on. We thank you guys, obviously, for supporting us every week. And being here is very appreciated. Um, as we said, be sure to be here next week. Um, I dare say Thursday night, same time, 8 o'clock where we will have Nathan on to talk a bit about European football and obviously his time here in Australia. Bloody that. Um, other than that, get down to your local football when you can. Over the weekend, Broadmeadow Magic. South... Uh, South. Well, so Broadmeadow Magic. Broadmeadow Magic. Edgeworth Eagles. It does not get any bigger than that. The winner goes through to the grand final. The loser will be Magic and no one cares. Um, out, and the other game, whatever that is, Maitland versus Hamilton. And if you can't get down to one of those you games, if you can't get down to one of those games, get yourself over to Twitch and watch Josh do another episode of his L Way to Career Mode. Another episode? I'm going to start it this weekend. Finally! So, fi mate, I've been busy, all right? Calm down. Oh, yeah, like I haven't. No, you haven't really. You have plenty of time this week. What are you going to be? No, <laughs> not this week. You get always so. You all the time in the world. Anyway, guys, we will leave it there. As I said, yes, I will try and get it done tonight uh, over the weekend. Benno will be obviously on over the weekend at some point. Long weekend. Other than that, we will catch you guys later. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. And as always, we, we hate Coast Scum. We hate Coast Scum. We do. Take take it easy, guys. Thanks very much. We will speak to you later. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.